Most meteorologists have a love-hate relationship with snow. We love it for the same reasons most people love it. It's a beautiful thing, it changes landscapes, it's fun, it's reasonably rare, and it challenges us. But we hate it because it's so tricky to forecast accurately, and so many people are interested in it, well, that puts the pressure on. But why is snow so difficult to forecast? Well, it's because of a number of factors that all have to come together. And because of the geography of the UK, these factors are often on a knife edge. First of all, though, here's Alex talking about the critical part temperature plays in producing the white stuff. Obviously, temperature is a big, big factor. Now, one degree of difference doesn't make hardly any difference on a fine summer's day or a dank day in autumn. But in winter, it can be the difference between a soggy scene or a wondrous whiteout. And it's not just the temperature around us. The whole temperature profile of the atmosphere from the ground up to the cloud needs to be understood. Most rain starts off as snow melting on the way down. But in winter, uh, that raindrop can go through lots of different layers, melting, freezing, melting and refreezing. But it's not just about temperatures. Next, the intensity of the precipitation is vital. When falling snow melts into rain, it takes heat energy from the air around it. The heavier the precipitation, the more heat it takes and the colder it gets. Sometimes it can get so cold that it stops melting entirely. We also need to consider time of day and year. Claire. Timing is crucial. A weather front arriving across the UK, say at dawn, the coldest time of the day during the winter months, we're more likely to see snow than even just a couple of hours later when the air has been given a chance to warm up a little bit. Elevation is also a factor. You're more likely to see snow over the hills and mountains rather than at lower levels. So how high up you are does make a difference. And analyzing the temperature profile of the atmosphere gives a good indication of where the snow will fall. In fact, when making calls about impacts of snow, we do need to consider the higher routes and also major roads at elevation. In fact, the National Severe Weather Warning Service is based on impacts. So let's say a centimetre of snow falls across a certain area. If it falls during rush hour, then we're more likely to see greater impacts than say 4 a.m. in the morning. There are other things we also need to consider. One more thing, and we're back to temperature. But now the temperature of the ground, that's crucial for how much snow is going to stick around. In late autumn, early winter, the ground is still quite warm. Later in winter, yes, the ground's cooled down, but come February, March time, the sun is getting stronger, so that can melt snow quicker. Now, this does sound like a lot of excuses, but just giving you examples of all the things that meteorologists have to think about when we're forecasting snow. And in this country, a lot of those things are often on a knife edge. It's rare that we get such cold air over such cold ground that everything falling from the sky is snow. But can it ever be too cold to snow? Well, it can be too dry to snow, and the colder the air is, the drier it is. So really cold air simply doesn't contain as much snow. Now, in the UK, it doesn't get that cold, and when we do see our lowest temperatures, it's normally in the absence of snow under clear skies at night. When we see our heaviest snow, it's often the case that mild air is meeting cold air, temperatures are a degree or so either side of freezing, and that explains why it's so difficult to predict snow in the UK.